Is Fire it, away. Is it is now? It's happening. Hey, we're on. Yeah, we're the Rob and Holly <laughs> Show. Lord. George Burns hey, in, the, in house. the house. Let's go, guys. So uh, we were just talking about things that you can or cannot say either on the radio or on the internet. And in, in we Holly, took, I said to keep it appropriate. Well, George, you and I decided that pretty much anything goes on the internet, right? I think people like real, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> this could be unfiltered I'm conversation. I'm very, very nervous. I, my bo- you know, our boss is watching now, probably. Well, you know that Rob to. likes to live on the edge. I, I noticed that at lunch today. He doesn't have a cover on his iPhone. So, you know, he's he's <laughs> he's all he, out there. This man yeah. lives dangerously out here. Right? Like, how he's does he even do that? He's absolutely playing with fire. <laughs> he's so responsible, though. You would think that he's not, but, like, look. like That's the reason that's that I just, can do this, because I am actually so responsible that I, I'm, I'm okay with it. No. I literally, do that. my phone would be broken in six hours if I didn't have a case on in it. In two seconds, yeah. right? Yeah. No, but so the, you've seen my case. Yeah. Like, the, the one thing like about- This is the uh, difference between Rob and I. Like Your case yeah. needs its own case. That case is a- It's a- what's, You're still showing that? Well, we're, just, we're talking no, about the phone other cases. side. the other side of it. Oh, oh, whoops. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, that's, sorry that's you had to see a picture saver. of Rob what? with his shirt off. What yeah, is going great. on right now? It's not yeah. my screen saver. Is that your background? No, I was showing somebody the, the picture of you uh, spray tanned with that's your shirt off. That's a handsome off. man yeah. right there, though. I mean, you got to say he looks good in that picture. I took out Dolly Parton. I put you right there. I will. Right so, there okay, so context for everyone. We did a Barbie musical recently for charity, mm-hmm. and uh, we had a great time. Would you, uh, would you consider ever doing... A musical of any sort? Or is, is there any that you actually watched that you liked? Because I know, I feel like that was my, I, I that was my first. A, I will be a good sport and go to a musical like with my wife on a oh, date night so nice. or something like that. And I, I usually do get drugged like kicking and screaming. It's not something that I want to do, but I do usually leave like have ha- having had a good time. Right? Yeah. I, there's a lot of talent in those performers and like in the, in the sets and, um, and the way they put on the shows. I don't see myself ever being in a musical but i <laughs> no. i don't mind going to like a, i'm a once every two year musical yeah okay. my uh, my wife dragged me to moulin rouge when we were in new york yeah That's nice. and i was i was kind of like i know i'm not i don't know about this i'm, I'm not a musical guy it's like girls in lingerie musical. but then once we went i was like i was very impressed and i did find myself leaving and, and i was like i really did enjoy that wait were you impressed what were you impressed by uh, everything really. And not only, not only the <laughs> women in lingerie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, have, I have an idea. Side. Yeah, I have an idea of what was impressive. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't just. Yeah. It wasn't just the ladies in lingerie. It yeah. was uh, actually. My wife was like, "You actually have a man crush on the main character." Oh. Because he was a very good singer and actor, and I was there. You go. I, I was like, yeah, the art. That, yeah, that, yeah, he crushed it. I took my husband to go see Chicago because I was like, I'll never get him to go see a Broadway show. It's just girls in lingerie, but they do talk about like killing their husbands, so that's kind of weird. But <laughs> so you got the that guy, going for you too. <laughs> yeah, my husband goes, that guy just winked at me, and I was like, no, he didn't. And I was like, come on, you think we were right in the front row? And I was like, he did not wink at you. I didn't think that you guys could see us. Like you on the stage, you can see oh, you us. You can see people. Oh, one hundred percent. Like how yeah. far out can you see? George? So it's funny. Um, you play these shows every night, right? And so your brain kind of goes on autopilot. So I'll be singing songs and have no idea what the words are that are coming out of my mouth. It's just the song is. Once you press play, it's gone. Right. Like when like, you drive somewhere and you're like, "How did I get here?" Exactly. Okay. So. My mind is like, oh, look at that guy chugging a beer. Look at that guy getting shut down by this girl he's trying to flirt with. Or look at this guy holding a sign. I'm not thinking about what I'm saying. I'm looking in the crowd, looking for interesting or exciting things, which makes every show, you know, fun and different. Um, But yeah, we can for sure see people. And I think sometimes people have enough to drink where they think nobody can see them because you see some some weird stuff. What is the weirdest thing that you've ever seen? I never knew. That you could even see beyond the first three rows. So this is so fascinating to yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, man. Can you say it? Well, like, I'm, I'm like filtering out that story I can't tell. Yeah. That story I can't tell. Okay. Um, let's see. The weirdest <laughs> thing that I've ever seen on stage. You know, people are just, uh, some of the outfit choices are a little bit uh, interesting. People have a lot of confidence in what they wear. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> some people should maybe, you know, wear more. Um, (laughs) there's so many stories I have that are just, y'all come ask me next time you see me at a show when it's not on the national radio show (laughs) and I'll tell you. Fair enough. Fair enough. Do you ever find, do you ever find yourself like zoning in on someone specific who's like really digging it? Cause it kind of pumps you up though too. A hundred percent. Yeah. You find that person that knows the, you know, everybody knows the words to like the singles, but you find that person that knows the words to the album cuts and you're like, yeah, you're a real one. You know, I see you out there. You did your homework. Like, you know, 
all the songs and we'll I'll kind of have moments with fans like really? that where I'm like I see you out there like yeah you're you're my person I yeah. swear to god my whole until this moment I thought that if an artist if I'm in the crowd and an artist looks at me even though I think that they're looking at me, they're probably looking like the way over this way. But you can actually see people. hundred percent. hundred percent. I'll tell well, you the one I mean, thing. I'll yeah. tell you the one thing that we need to like uh, make a petition to stop. And this is not me getting on anybody, but just, you okay. know, uh, a learning moment for all of us. The uh, when people write you notes on their cell phones and then hold them up That's over hard. your head. Because we can't read that. I'm, I'm 30 difficult. yards away from you. And most of the time it's like, you know play Morgan Wallen song <laughs> or, you know it's like can we not do that yeah it's hilarious yeah. but maybe if they wrote one word and then their friend had another word and then you had just a whole sentence yeah going, maybe. I think yeah. there's uh there's one specific video uh that I remember where there was a there's a girl in the front row I don't know what concert it is um but there's there's like a guy it's like a girlfriend boyfriend type of thing but on her on her phone she's like I want to be with you who's on stage and the guy, her boyfriend next to her is so drunk, he doesn't realize that she's going like, hey. Oh, the phone says like, I'll, it says like, I'll leave him for you or something like, something like along those and lines. And he's like, yeah. And the guy's like, yeah, look. <laughs> he's going, yeah. It's got to oh, be Poor big. guy. Um, the other thing that's really tough, and this happened more like when we were a bar band before, like it was bigger stages and stuff. But, you know. When you're playing music, you've got your in ears and your ears, so it mutes everything else, and you can just hear what's coming through, uh, you know, the guitars and the okay. microphones. And then I'm playing guitar, so I've got both of my hands full, and I'm singing into a microphone. And you know, a drunk guy will come up with four shots in his hand and be like, "Here, take it." And you're in the middle of it, like, "What am I you're supposed like, to do with that?" Yeah, you know? I can't, I can't do yeah. anything. Now I will take the shots eventually, but yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you don't, you have a shot assistant. At, at I some need point. that. Yeah, a shot tech. Yeah, yeah. That's a <laughs> there's a guitar tech, yeah. and then you're like, "I'm the shot tech." Yeah. yeah. Do you remember a specific show, uh, recent, like recently that stands out, or, or at least when you know things started to blow up for you recently after? The whole experience with Clay Walker, right? Yeah. Uh, do you remember a time where you started noticing people singing back and going like, "Hey, we we actually got something here." A hundred percent. It's I mean, and it's been semi recently. It was probably this summer um, that I started seeing it go like you could almost judge it by like the rows of the crowd, right? Like it started with the first row singing every word, and then all of a sudden you've got three rows of crowd singing every word, and then all of a sudden it's the whole crowd singing every word. And that is like head to toe goosebumps for me. Yeah. Um, it's it's unbelievable. Um, we got a standing ovation at the Opry after we played it. That was insane. You know, it, it's stuff like that that it's like it feels like you just like are living a dream when it happens. Because when you write these songs, it's like you and a couple of buddies in a studio or a, or a bedroom or something, and mm -hmm. um, you don't realize that the whole world is hearing it. Um, until you go out there and play for these crowds and to to see people hear the song and make it their own and make it the soundtrack of like either their relationships or people that they're crushing on or people that they're missing like it's so fun for me to see people taking the song and like making it their own and putting it into their own lives so that is something that uh, I don't think I'll ever get tired yeah. of yeah do you think that ends up hindering you in your now songwriting because you know Oh my God! Actually, people are gonna. Hear I think this. it's helping. It's I helping. I think it's helping. Okay. Yeah, because I also think about like, how do I relate to other people when I'm writing music and like it, when I'm when I'm talking about a subject or something? It's like, how could somebody else make this part of their own life or either find like healing or excitement or longing out of it? You know, and and so I think that it's helping me um, like write songs from a more like wide perspective so yeah i the stuff that i've been writing uh lately i think the best thing for me is i'm going out and i'm like how would a crowd you know how would an arena react to this song um and i think that that's helped me kind of like figure out how to like craft that sound and how to talk to people yeah yeah that's so interesting 2023 has been insane for you yes um by the way so congratulations thank on you, everything thank you but we see you out and about and you are like a complete and total country music super fan i love it so what has been like maybe one of the highlights from 2023 for you as a music fan that you've gotten an experience by being george burge yeah um so Gary Allen is like 
idol for me, like top three all time influence. And he asked me out on tour for a month and we got to be, he went from being an idol to being a friend, gave me his phone number. We started texting all the time. He started like helping me pick songs, helping me get feedback on like my direction and how to grow. And now we play golf and drink tequila together. I'm like, what, what planet am I living <laughs> on that? Like, you know, I'm at a pool party at Gary Allen's house eating crawfish in his backyard. <laughs> like it was, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, but just to like be in the fray with these guys, I got to walk the red carpet at the CMAs and, um, um, we get there and it's, you know, you see the red carpet on TV and you think it's like, okay, three pictures, some flashes and you're on the carpet. Huh. And so we got dressed up. I got to bring my wife with me, which was so exciting. She looked beautiful, she looked, by the way. Um, thank you yeah. so much. And um, we get there and, you know, we do the first couple of pictures and then you turn the corner and it's like a hundred interview stations. And me just kind of, I kind of just gomer pile my way through life. I'm like, you know, I'm not really aware <laughs> of what's going on around me. I just kind of stumble through things. And so I walk up. And I do my first interview and my wife's kind of elbowing me and she's like, are you looking at the signs above these interviews? And it's like Today Show and USA and like People Magazine and Billboard and all this stuff. And she's like Rolling Stone. She's like, are you looking at the names on these interviews? And meanwhile, I'm like, yeah, well, my favorite Christmas movie now that I think about it. <laughs> That's probably a good thing, yeah. though. You don't put too much pressure on yourself if you don't see, like, oh, this is going to be on yeah, the Yeah, I'm going to really regret all these interviews when they come out, but um, it was fun while it lasted. Oh, my God. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, the addition to Mind on You, by the way, because I know it's oh a gosh. cool new version with Kid G, right? Kid G and Charlie on a Friday jumped on it with me, and um, it is so exciting for me. So I've been fans of both of these guys um, for a long time. I think Kid G has just got this crazy emotion in his vocal. It's like, he, he's one of those guys when he sings something, like you feel it, it feels real. And then I've been a, a fan of Charlie on a Friday for a minute and I saw an interview with him a few months back where he was like, man, I'm really getting into country music. He was like, it's new for me, but I'm really loving it. And I was like, well, that kind of sparked an idea in my head to like make it an event song. You know, Mind on You is getting close to to the top of the chart and, and it's getting heard by as wide an audience as I've ever reached out to, but how cool would it be to like re-release a new version and even make it bigger and so I reached out to both of these guys hoping somebody would say yes and and they both said yes within like 10 minutes of reaching out which was amazing just cold yeah. emails right and uh that was they had both heard the song they were both fans of the song and that was like a huge like I don't know pinch me moment that both of these guys were in and so we sent them the recorded song with holes for them to like put their own vocals on and uh this song has been my baby. It's changed my life. It's like my first ever hit. It's it's just it means everything to me. And so when you're letting your letting somebody else go feature on it, it's a little bit nerve wracking because you don't know what you're going to get back, right? And when I got both of their vocals back on it, my jaw was on the. I literally jumped up and down the first time I heard it. It was just pure energy. They absolutely killed it. They were so dialed in, and um, I cannot wait to see what this song does because I think it gives it a whole new life, and um, I think people are going to be. Uh, really excited when they hear it and isn't it isn't it so fun that it's like anything goes in country music now it's the best we're, we're like man, hey there's... everyone everyone's welcome no matter what it's more collaborative it's, it's, yeah you know it's hip-hop it's it's old school country it's it's classic I think that rock anybody tells you that they don't have that mix on their playlist at yeah. home is lying to you you know what i mean i grew up as country as country could be i grew up in texas country i didn't know there was another genre besides country music till about seventh grade right <laughs> um and it's like I, 90s country will always be my first love that's what influenced me but like in high school my playlist was country music rap old school rock hip-hop uh r&b like it was all of that across the board and i think people just appreciate art and good music and storytelling and songs that make you feel something and so to have these superstars wanting to be part of our genre like why would we ever say no to that i think it's right. amazing and i think it's so cool like let's have as many people at this party as we can like that's yeah. that's the whole point of it is to to connect with people and make relationships and make people feel something so i think it is the best thing to happen to country music um opening the door and and i think that it's cool to have that blend of like Artists are allowed now. I'm working on my new record and I have some like diehard traditional stuff and then I have some hip hop leaning stuff and then I have stuff in the middle. And I think to be able to put together a body of work that's got a little piece of all of that is awesome. You yeah. know, it's it's it, it doesn't get stale. It's got uh, variety and it's exciting. So um, it's art at the end of the day. Right. Like you're trying yeah. to create something new. You're trying to create something special and and to be able to take like the handcuffs off and like kind of push the boundaries a little bit, I think is the best. I love it. We're all the, we're all in a good spot. We are. We <laughs> really are. But now you, you, you're making me think about you in the seventh grade. Uh, what 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 were you like? <laughs> the in this? Worst. Like where where did you were you in like band? Like l tell me about you. Seventh oh, grade, man. George. Yeah, <laughs> this is a it's a you know, nobody. uh <laughs> 
<laughs> it's it's uh it's embarrassing to look back no, on. No, I, I was adorable. that kid that Wait, like did you play sports? I did. I played uh I was I was a very overweight kid. It wasn't until my freshman year of high school I caught like an eight inch growth spurt, but I was a big husky, chunky kid that loved quarter pounders with cheese and uh cleanup hitter on a baseball team <laughs> and you know, like I was that kid. But I loved country music and uh I wore cowboy boots to school, but I also had a puka shell necklace, which is the worst thing I've ever seen when I look at the pictures. Oh, my, come on. My wife loves to just harass what me. What year about was that? that? Kenny, that's the Kenny Chesney thing at like first, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, and I know? think the worst part is like I look at myself and I'm like, that is the nerdiest kid I've ever seen. But my confidence was 11 out of 10. Like, <laughs> I was feeling myself like, I, and I, you know, I, I hope that for my kids that like they can be blind to what they actually are and <laughs> just have pure confidence to go through life. But I look back now and I'm like, this kid, man. Man, I think yeah. some of that uh, some of that stuff's coming back. I have I like found I, I found this old. Well, I found what do they what do we call them? Like a choker? Isn't that what it is? It's a, a choker. Yeah. 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 I found one from probably my seventh grade time that was uh, it was like a bunch of little wood wooden pieces. I don't even like wooden bead, beads. Like wooden beads. Yeah. And um, I, I I was like, oh, I told my wife I put it on as a joke because my wife has known me since elementary school. We've known each other That's since amazing. we were kids. I put it on. I was like, what do you think of this? She's like, <laughs> I think it's seventh grade. And uh, and then next thing you know, I saw some young person wearing one, and I was like, look at it's look back. At, yeah, it's style back. always comes so back. Bring, but you got the, I can you got the puka shell. One thing I can promise you, I will never wear a puka <laughs> shell necklace like, again. I will I'm not. trying to get you to bring it back. <laughs> That's it. But wait, so wait, when did you start to play music? Seventh grade? Uh, probably sixth grade. I started okay. writing songs. Songs, um, started learning guitar. Um, I sang and write, wrote songs about sixth grade. I started learning guitar about eighth grade, and then I started a band in high school. Yeah, so okay. it's something I've done forever. I think the coolest part about growing up in Austin is the culture was um, everybody wrote original songs. A lot of cities, like, everybody plays music, but it's all cover bands, and our songs were all terrible. But we were these garage bands, and we would go over to each other's houses and, like, play little concerts for our friends in the driveway, and it was all original music. And it was the worst songs you've ever heard, but it was at least, like, learning how to write songs and learning how to put on shows. And that was a really cool part about growing up in Austin. That is really cool. And I'm cool. really, really glad it was a time before there were cell phone videos <laughs> to record it. <laughs> those would be coming, those would be coming yeah. up. We would oh have that. Oh, my gosh. All right, so what, is, is, what do we have to look forward to for you in 2024? Oh, we have the biggest year yet cooking. I'm so excited. Um, going out with Parker McCollum at the top of the year um, we're doing 15 shows with him a couple texas boys it's going to be a blast um, so thankful for him believing in us and excited for what we have going on um, i get to uh, be on my first tour bus next year i just sold my my sprinter and trailer uh, nice. last <laughs> week which is amazing i mean i've driven every mile of this uh, beautiful country of ours in that thing and so to be on the big bus next year and have a bedroom in the back and go to sleep in the next city that's and wake up in the next city that's going to be pretty sweet and um and then we're working on a new record so um i've been writing like crazy um i've got a uh, next single picked out and i've got another one cut and then um we're going to go in and cut four more here end of january but it's my favorite stuff I've ever been a part of making I feel like I really found my lane and my voice as an artist and so um we're not going to wait. We're just going to start putting out music. I think we're going to try to put out like a song a month starting in, in January of next year and just get people um, some new music because that's what I love to do. I love to make music and we've got people that are excited to hear it right now. So why would we not? Yeah, yeah don't go. hold out. Yeah. Please don't do that. Yeah, and then, I appreciate uh, that. A major, major tour that we are an inch away from um, this summer. I wish I could announce it now, but be on the lookout. So it'll be the biggest look I've ever had. I'm, I'm super All excited. Right. About hey, it. Congratulations. Yeah. Big news Thank coming you. from George Burge. Oh, Let's one more go. thing before we go. We do uh, this thing on our show called The Last Laugh, where we feature a stand-up comedian. Who's your pick for it? Do you have a favorite stand-up? Who makes stand -up? you laugh? Yeah. Shane Gillis makes me cry laugh right now. I think he is absolutely hilarious. Yeah. I love um, Burt Kreishner. I love Tom Segura. I mean, all those guys are, thank God for comedians. We yeah. need a little levity in this world. You right? can't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. All right. That uh, we'll, uh, I think Shane, we've never had. We no, never we've Shane never had. Gillis. No, no, no. No one's ever said it yet. He, he tends to offend people, but I think it'd be fine. We'll, we'll find, we'll <laughs> find he doesn't offend me. I think it's hilarious. But I like to be offended. It's, yeah. interesting, it's interesting, like, you know, sometimes with cancel culture, yep. it's like yep. some people can get away with it. Like Theo Vaughn is another guy who could, he's, he, he can say, he says he can say himself. whatever he wants. These guys just cancel and, themselves, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's yeah. like in the comedy world, it's like you got to be yeah. able to laugh at it. Nothing serious. And they're poking fun at themselves, too. Yeah. Another guy I really love is Nate Bargatze. Um, yeah. He's, I'm, I live in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, and he's from Mount Juliet, Tennessee, and now he's like a national superstar. So that's kind of cool for me. He references a dog bakery that uh, is the pride of Mount Juliet where I live, <laughs> and it's like, like national stand-up. I'm like, I know that place. Yeah. It's just down the street. <laughs>
Christ. I just saw that he's doing a big uh, Netflix comedy is a joke festival at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, come on. And it's like Seinfeld is going to oh, be there and a like bunch a of other dream, guys. Ever, I just te- every dream comedian. Yeah. Well, I just texted my wife. It's on May 2nd, a day after my birthday. And I go, let's go for my birthday. Because we were supposed to go see Nate here. And then we ended up going what to Stagecoach. We, we had to go. We went to Stagecoach and we missed Nate here. Was it Stagecoach? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. But anyway, um, let's go. Mark it on your calendar. May 2nd, yeah. Nate Bargetzi, Come George on. Spurge. Yes. <laughs> and Robin Holly Show. I'll be the opening <laughs> act. Yeah. I like that. All right. Thank you so much for joining us here at Music Town Detroit City with George Burge. That was hey. fun, y'all. Thanks for having me. Congratulations on everything. Thank you. Thank you.